three, two, one. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Facts on the Ground. I am Misty Winston. Um, I honestly don't know where my co-host is. He may um, may pop in here soon. We'll see what happens. Um, but I'm super pumped. Uh, normally, I would like to be live streaming this because we have the wonderful Jesse Jet back on the show. Thank you, sir, for coming back. Oh, um, and he yeah. has a new piece that he um, has hyped up quite a bit to me. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure, dude. Um, but I'm excited to hear it. So thank you so much for coming back to the show. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. Yeah, okay. So do you want to set up the piece? Like, do you want yeah, to talk I, I about- Yeah, I definitely okay. do. I definitely okay. do. So let's this, jump in. So again, with a lot of a lot of things in the past, like um, Lockheed Martin OnlyFans, I, I wrestled with, originally that was going to be just spoken word, and then I thought about turning it into a song, and I wrestled with like, is it too long to try to turn into a piece? I don't want to take away from the meaning of it by trying to force it into a format that it, it doesn't work in. And this, I had written a melody, I'd put together a track and everything, and wrote a chorus, wrote a first verse, start writing the second verse, and then just couldn't stop. And I just kept going and going. And every time I thought, I was like, this has got to be the end. I would come up with another line. I was like, I have to use that one. And then it would just snowball and <laughs> snowball. And I got to the end and I came home and played through it. I think when I brought it up to you yesterday, I was like, new song, new song I want to do. And then I sit down with it last night. And it's not that it couldn't be made into a song, but the melody and the chorus was too, too fun and kind of earwormy of a almost pop feeling vibe to put with something this stark and dystopian um and i mentioned to you it's it's maybe the most futuristic i've gone with a setting and the more i went into that and the harsher i went into like corporate controlled future none of it seemed unplausible <laughs> it all all felt like if we're not right there we're on the cusp of it you know yeah. Um, that's what's kind of amazing is that um, people, it doesn't seem like people recognize how close we are to real, yeah. Yeah. real trouble, like real dystopian hell. Exactly. Trouble. We're close fans. And we that's really the interesting are. thing is it's a cool barometer for me to see exactly how someone thinks when I see their reaction to a piece like this, because I'll, I'll read something. And if someone's like, man, wouldn't that be crazy? you know that they don't really get how close we are. And if someone is shit, no, 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 uh, you know, then they're absolutely like, yeah, you, that's, that's exactly what we're, we're in the middle of, or we're going to see in our lifetime, you know? Yeah. Um, it's just crazy so, because yeah. we have like historical, um, I mean, there's, uh, we, it's not like we don't have examples of this in the past of like, where you just yeah. ignore it and you're like, no, that's ridiculous. That could never happen. That could yeah. never happen in the United States. You know, of course it can. It's happening. They're slow walking yeah. us into it. Um, yeah. It's very effective. And people mm -hmm. are like, some of them are like gleefully <laughs> handing yeah. over control yeah. to corporate America. Yeah. Like, please make yeah. my decisions for me, master. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, we are not worthy. Ugh. And it's funny because I, I'm, I'm going to do a song actually that's that's kind of a tie into that. That's a, a song off of the virus called Hooky that was about the people that are able to just kind of tune everything out and, and experience that that bliss uh, that sometimes you're, you find yourself jealous of, you know, or right. envious of to some degree. Um, and I, I think it's a good balance out to to the new piece because, yeah, it's... I, I've always wanted to to clear that thousand word mark on something. Um, I think Town Hall did just barely, but I think this one clocks in around thirteen hundred words. So again, it was one That's of those I like words, took a, <laughs> I took a step back and like I had to kind of reread it through myself a few times. You know, um, not something I would be able to easily do from memory. I don't think for for all the songs I can. There's just uh, that is a lot of words. Uh, again, to this one. I, I do feel like there's been a, a shift in how I've approached writing stuff since Bomb Squad. Um, and, and really, I think it, it began <laughs> with writing the Assange piece, because writing Conviction, knowing that it was going to be spoken word, let me, you know, move it around differently. And it's just, it's just such a different approach than if I know I'm writing a song. And obviously not having to worry about just going on too long. Um, 
and and again doing this more i i love the the setting of getting to do a reading not that i don't love playing and singing but it's just it's such a different interaction yeah. and um this this one especially i yeah uh th the song that it was originally going to be a part of um was and this is for the most part from the perspective of an elected official um it doesn't really matter who but i i was really thinking doesn't. about <laughs> about getting in a line about, you know, um, needing to call and write your elected officials, that kind of line. And then that just immediately made me think of the classic, uh, you know, you don't call, you don't write. <laughs> like that, that line kind of stuck in my head. And, um, and that kind of rolled into politicians taking our passiveness for uh, a green light that that's us giving them the okay that obviously whatever they're doing we're silence okay with. is complicity exactly i say it all and the time about julian assange because people so who are it, not speaking out mm -hmm. yeah no sorry go on no 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 it's fine no like i'm just saying people who don't it's the same thing if you're mm -hmm. not dudes people they're bombing people they're killing people in your name like you live here okay. you are a citizen of this country they are your elected officials who you in some way um have uh, uh passively just allowed to reach a position of power and then do these kinds of things and makes make those kinds of decisions you, mm -hmm. if you're not speaking out about it you're complicit you are, you, I mean, if you don't like, it's the people that don't speak out, sorry, here comes a rant. It's the people that don't speak out about imperialism. Yeah. It's like, they yeah. want healthcare and they, and they, you know, they, they love Bernie Sanders and they want to talk about $15 an hour. And all of those things are great, except $15 an hour is a fucking joke. It should be 30. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But all of those things are great. But if you talk about that and then don't mention a word about the illegal bombing of Syria or the number of coups that we're uh, conducting across the globe or the occupation um, that we are imposing on numerous countries, sovereign nations across the globe. If you're not talking about yeah. that, I'm, it's hard for me to take you seriously. Yeah. <laughs> That's hard. It's hard. That's hard for me, especially if I know yeah. that you know better or have the ability to know better. You know, <laughs> it's just frustrating. Yeah, exactly. Once you know, it's that's that's when the the complicity begins. You know, mm -hmm. as soon as as soon as you're aware, if you believe it's 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 a threat, and and you choose to ignore it, then you're giving it the green light, and that's that's where I was going with this. And originally, it was just going to be a song, and it was going to be shorter. Uh, it was going to be called "The Right." And I wanted to play off of every different meaning I could get out of the word right. And uh, that was my first verse, kept it short. And then when I started writing the second verse, again, it just went out of control. And it, it stays for the most part from the perspective of an elected official getting to walk you through what your complicity allows and how easy it is for them to get the redemption arc from the media, you know, mm -hmm. um, and to have their their image uh, rehabilitated from what, whatever the the scandal is, that nothing nothing sticks, and that at some point it does mention that there there could be a, a mountain of letters written, and they can still still function, they can still do what they want, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then and I, I I have a really hard time. When I write, I, I tend to, to leap perspective um, to all of a sudden, without explaining, go from like someone else to first person point of view, and then kind of past tense. And I, I, in moments here, and I think it's obvious, I think it comes across that I kind of surface to speak from my own point of view of all of this. And then it's kind of smothered back under this corporate talk and double speak that leads into an awful lot about uh, Tesla. An awful lot of this went to, to Elon Musk and, and Tesla oh, fuck um, to, to the point that, that it just, if you need a good, you know, futuristic dystopian billionaire, bad guy, I mean, who, who else? Like, I know. so. <laughs> well, Bezos is like the quintessential Dr. Evil type. That's true. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's do this thing. Let's okay. Yeah. Um, 
so this will definitely be on the uh, the spoken word thing that I'm going to be recording in the next uh, in the next few weeks. Um, this is called uh, Hyacinth, uh, which actually ties back into autopilot into a line there. I wanted to use that word. The rhyme scheme kind of called for it, and then I found an opportunity to kind of tie that into that line in autopilot, so that they'll have a little bit of a, a um, conceptual kind of a, a flow to them. Through line, yeah. So um, this is called Hyacinth, uh, What More You Have to Give. You don't call, don't write. How is that not to imply that you think what I'm doing must be right? Think that I'm doing all right. And you don't mind giving up your rights. Don't mind seeing your leaders aligned with the violent right. Don't mind carrying water to pour on the altar where we plan to sacrifice all of your pensions in one of our nameless imperial rights that renders the rioters silent and pries every rhyme by its root in their heads, that quiets the storm by denying their platforms to buy up some time for the task force, crafting a law to detain them and mace them if they try to ask for their water and bread. Mind you, the bread looks like moss off a boulder from all of the mold and the water is rusted and red. Bitter is all of the blood you hear pounding when you try to block out the sounds as you're lying in bed. Mind you, the bed is a spot on the floor and there's really no more to be said. You don't call, don't write. If you knew better, there'd be mountains of letters outside, stacked to the sky, blocking the sun out, blocking my drive. You'd slow the flow of my campaign funds down, my reputation in the ground by sundown. Good thing I got MSNBC on my PR rundown. To put you at ease, maybe give you a nice little neolib rubdown and blare my redemption for Breitbart to come town. Flood all your free speech channels with a bunch of raw shit and shut the pumps down. Then usher out a couple dozen sock accounts to pop up in your mentions with their toxin stocked and talons out. Here to help defend a man's dementia with the passion of a talent scout. Telling you they're bullshit while they're drooling half a gallon down the hat they'll pull a rabbit out. Verbally they'll strap you down. Slap you with a finely crafted sound from the squad that you can try to feed your family with or play back for the officers arriving to evict you in the hopes that they won't snatch you out. But big surprise, their clubs are out and masks are down. Impolitely asking you to pack a little faster now. Just to please the bastard with the fascist tats and badge that makes him think he's someone actually of matter, not an actor playing overseer at the sick behest of benefactors who would starve as many families as it takes to make their profits fatter. And when they tell those loyal cops that their kids are on the chopping block to sate their daily greed and need to satisfy their hungry stocks, statistically, two-fifths of these are all too pleased because it just means that they can beat their spouses without all those little weak attempts to make them stop. I was watching TV screaming, make it stop. Screaming at the cable feed of double talk. Screaming at the daily razor shaving down our labor laws. And screaming at the left like they can wave a wand and change it all. Screaming at the leaders we gave time and trust and money to who played us all. We the people, tattered rags and paper dolls. Screaming at our debt and at the overfed pigs who create it all. Trying to teach the ways of the world to my son like I don't hate it all. Stone soup, cops came and ate it all. Water for the homeless, cops are going to break them all. Education budget, cops are going to take it all. Send your kids to prison. Think about the time you'll save us all. Years later, you'll be lucky if you're paid at all. Years later, you'll be wired to a grid that turns your brain's electric current to a resource they can strip. And we'll all be mining Bitcoin 80 hours at a clip. Too tired for the drive home. It ain't worth the trip because it hurts to be reminded that you never see your kid. And every time they fire up the hub and plug you in, their memory recedes a little further till it blurs into the dim. Until you can't recall your kin, you open up your eyes and you see Tesla on your skin. Earn a dime a day and owe them 20 for the mandatory membership to Tesla gym where we're all one big happy family who neutralized your family at the gates when they tried to sneak a message in and taunts you with escape in our advertising messaging, taunts you with the sounds of a child at play, a warm summer day, the things we can all sense slipping away because their frequency is lessening. You are working for a living in which you are only visiting, working under safety laws that profit ends up pivoting and shifting into figures in which losing you is just the cost of maximizing profit in the world that we do business in. The world in which we fight to see the bright side but always get the business end. And I've been here and wait since late 08 to witness this descent. Suck my soul away in little bits a dime a day but with a monthly cap of 50 cents. 
because Tesla funded studies show that overpaid employees don't know what to do with all the extra money because they're lazy and they're ignorant. But all that extra capital keeps innovation radical. And you could say that you were part of history in the making in the unacknowledged, patronizing, strictly honorary sense. We understand you may resent that Mr. Musk was heaven sent to take you on his back for his divine ascent. But just before he reached the palace gates above the firmament, he dropped you on the outer steps a month before retirement. Again, may we refer you to suggested ways of demonstrating gratitude for Mr. Musk that he was kind enough to let you feed his great Leviathan. Tesla-funded studies show that you amount to nothing in the hours you're not wired in. Hours you spend quietly denying that you let them in your head or let them walk potential buyers in. Mind you, all of this a mere month before retirement. Mind you, your retirement is waiting in the dirt that feeds the hyacinth. Or maybe, if you're lucky, you could spend another year assisting researchers in biosynth. Now, mind you, that amounts to nothing more than torture, but they wipe your memory after every session, washing out all prior sins. Think of it as Mr. Musk absolving you of prior sins. Don't think of it as skinning you and fitting you with trial limbs. Think of it as Mr. Musk presenting you the opportunity to help America's elite achieve tighter skin, fuller lips, healthy eyes, smoother lids. Don't think of it as rape. Try to think of it as Mr. Musk assigning you a mate because America needs cattle. I mean, kids. Don't think what Mr. Musk can do for you. Ask yourself if there is something more you have to give. Ask yourself what more you have to give. Ask yourself what more you have to give. Ask yourself what more you have to give. And that's Hyacinth. <laughs> it's so much, like it's my brain, like can't even <laughs> process it. I'm serious, like. I need, I think I need to listen. Let me, um, let me send you that text. Sorry, I meant to do that yes, before we started. Yes, yes, that will help. If you but, want, we can, we can walk through it if there's some, if there's ever anything that I felt needed some, yes. <laughs> some well, time to examine. <laughs> my problem is, is that, okay, I, I may have already, you may already know, I have severe ADHD. And so, and it goes so fast that sometimes like you'll catch me on a line and I start thinking about that. And then I miss like three lines because I'm still <laughs> thinking about, you know what I mean? And so I'm yeah. like trying to play catch up. There's so much, like, that's just a lot. Ooh, dude. And that's why you see, I looked at all that and I'm like, that's so hard. If I turn that into a song, it's going to be like a Mars yeah. Volta song. No, it's 20 that's minutes spoken or something. Word. <laughs> that's spoken yeah. word. Like yeah. that was, yeah, that might be like, I still, I'm going to be partial to um, conviction. Obviously. Yeah. Well, that, that's, it's, that it's might very be rare that I, I have a mission statement and I stick to it and I get a, a message across that's that pivotal. And for that reason, I do feel like conviction is my most effective, you know. Well, and it just um, means the most to me. That's, that's, so I'm that's selfish. Precious. <laughs> like that, that one, I, if, yeah, if I got a chance to read one thing, I feel like that's, that would be the one, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I was I really so proud want of autopilot last yes. week. Um, and, and I was like, man, autopilot, I was like, this is my best thing I've ever written. And then I wrote this the other day. I feel like this is on this a is... whole different, this is, this is, this is, yeah. So yeah. I, I, I always, like, since I was kidding. a kid, that was different. I was a kid, like, like that was I, different. I always write different when it starts getting warm. It would always be August would hit. Oh. I'd crank out like five or six songs. And now that I live in Michigan, warm weather is something I, I don't get all the time. I used to, I grew up in Florida and so Christmas was hot, you know? And then the Keys was even hotter. But now, like, and now being you're in, in Michigan, Michigan. I, I love cold <laughs> weather. And it's such a different, You like, do? Oh, I adore it. And oh. that's why I, yeah. And, I mean, my wife grew up here. Mm. But when, when we moved here, I'm like, I, I love the snow. I still, when it snows, I'm like, guys, it's snowing outside. I'm like, I'm that obnoxious guy that you want to punch no. in the face, you know? I'm but, the person uh, who starts complaining when it drops below, like, 65. <laughs> I, and I've lived in Ohio my whole life. It's yeah. not like I haven't time to like get used to it but fuck the cold oh. and see i i love it so then all of a sudden it starts getting warm and it's like i that uh, affects me even more so as soon as we've had warm temperatures here i have i've been a lot more creative but this was i was on a different uh, just a different yeah scale this for one's this. And, yeah yeah this one, that's because i've never had trouble like keeping up before yeah. You, know I, you know what I mean? Like I felt like I wasn't even going to say that out loud because I'm Jesus, you're dumb. But like I <laughs> or what's wrong with you? But I, I just it was seriously like you would well, no, really I told, catch I told me you, on one line. It took me a couple of read throughs myself after I finished it to really like. Yeah. Yeah. I just think that that's a lot. <laughs> so I just I just sent it to you. <laughs> OK. On Twitter. Yeah. OK. Oh, that's not what I want to do. Dumbass. Okay. So yeah, that was a lot, my friend. We definitely need to go through that. Like we definitely need to go through it. 
So what, what was there like something that inspired, like inspired you? Like, was there something like a news story that made the, or is it something more that's just like a cumulative? Really, no, I think it's just kind of everything lately. You know, I, for a while I was writing such frequent stuff every other day, writing a song. And now a, a lot of the times I'm just, I'm, I'm busy or I don't feel like I'm drawing inspiration like I did from something, but it's because it's building up on kind of a, a, a simmer. Um, <laughs> and, and it's weird because like I wrote autopilot and within two or three days, I was already bummed out because I felt like I didn't, I wasn't feeling creative. And, um. and like, and my wife was like, didn't you, didn't you just write a super huge thing that you just read. I was like, I did, but I feel like there, there's not something waiting in the wings, you know? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, a few days later, when I started writing this again, I was sitting down to write a short second verse and that turned into all, all of that. <laughs> like, I don't like cutting something up to try to use in different parts. If I write it all in one chunk, that's, that's going to be the piece. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I have it up now. So now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Woo. Seriously, my brain's still a little loopy looping. Now I'm like trying to like I um like I'm trying to find stuff that I remember grabbing me, um, because there was quite a few that like seriously made me stop and I was like whoa. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, I mean, oh, there's just so much. Don't mind seeing your leaders aligned with the violent right. Don't mind carrying mm -hmm. water to pour on the altar where we plan to sacrifice all of your pensions in one of our nameless imperial rites that renders the rioters silent and prize every rhyme by its root in their heads that quiets the storm by denying them platforms to buy up some time for the task force, crafting a law to detain them and mace them if they try to ask for their water and bread. Oh, just like this. We're really not that far. Yeah from yep. that i mean look at what's happening around us look at the number of people who are already in complete catastrophe yeah there's a lot of people who are genuinely in like complete catastrophe mode and there are a lot of people hanging by a thread for sure um and it's Again, it's the year 2021 in the United States of America. We're in the middle of a pandemic and we can't, we, they told us 2000 and then changed it to 1400. And it's like people bitched about it, but yep. what the fuck did you do? What, why exactly. is nobody doing anything about that? What, exactly. Like, I'm mad. I'm, why, I just don't understand the complete lack of action. Yeah. <laughs> it's so terrifying. Um, let's see. And I do love that you don't call, uh, you don't call, don't write. <laughs> I love that. I love that because I do a lot of political calls and mm -hmm. letters and I do that knowing full well that it's probably not going to make much difference because I'm like one of very few people that bother. Yeah. Um, I think ge like generally speaking mm -hmm. and, but it, like I can make three phone calls in like maybe five to seven minutes because mm. even if you get somebody on the phone, which doesn't happen super often. Yeah. Um, and if you do, it's just an intern who's like there to take a message or mm -hmm. whatever, you know what I mean? Um, but it, it, you don't, they don't, it's like you have a couple minutes to get your mm. point across or you're leaving a message to get your point across. Mm -hmm. Um, but it only takes like five to seven minutes. I can do that. Like that's, yeah, that's not a big deal. Um, but it's, people just aren't very, people, ugh, people in this country have been very thoroughly, um, I don't know, just completely, um, I don't know if lazy is the right word or if it's indifferent. I think that we've just conditioned people to be indifferent about our politics and what mm -hmm. is actually happening. Mm -hmm. And that sucks, man. Cause yeah. the people in charge, <laughs> they're nuts. They're nuts. <laughs> they scare me. They're really scary people. Seriously. They're really scary people. Like that's not. Well, I mean, just like the, you know, the Carl Rove quote mm. that Justy read that inspired autopilot. That, that's yeah. terrifying. You know? Okay. Now I got to read some more. Hold on. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm so bad at this. Like I'm trying to like have conversations and try to read so I can find better. I'm not good at that. All right. Let's see. What's the part where, where did you, what was the one that you said that like, I was going to, there, it was oh. like, the, <laughs> where, um, you don't, oh, no, 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 hold on. Oh, come on. I can't read fast enough, really, is my problem. I can, but. See, so you usher out a couple dozen sock accounts to pop in your mentions with the toxins stocked and talons out yes. here to help defend a man's dementia with the passion of a talent scout selling you their bullshit while they're drooling half a gallon down the hat and they'll pull a rabbit out. Like that, like. <laughs> that. Seriously, I processed that one. For, like, I missed probably a lot of what was after that because <laughs> that was awesome. Like, there are a lot of the oh. lines I'm, I'm really proud of in this are, are one-liners, which I, I like. Yeah. Um, but maybe one of my favorite that really changed the tone of it was the um, years later, you'll be wired to a grid that turns your brain's electric current to a resource they can strip and we'll all be mining Bitcoin 80 hours at a clip. Yes. <laughs> Once I went in that direction, I'm like, okay, how how Tesla future can we <laughs> can we go? Yeah, which again doesn't feel that far off, you know? No, well, and here's the thing, and it's not even just Elon Musk; it could also be Jeff Bezos. Like sure. I have been saying, oh, yeah. for years that Jeff Bezos is this close to becoming like Emperor Bezos, mm -hmm. um, Captain of the Universe, whatever. Yep. Like he's he's really this close. That man has i mean he, bill gates gives him some competition because bill gates owns a shitload of farmland it's yeah I'm um just he has like the food source mm -hmm. um that you, people not paying attention to that you need to pay attention to bill gates and how much farmland he owns because that's yeah. what they're, they're trying to buy up all of the um farms and water sources and all mm -hmm. of and then they don't need you what do they need you for you know yeah. so and they don't care if you die or if they can exploit you to make a profit or whatever or enslave you to provide yeah. for them it's not like we haven't we don't have historical reference for that like these are things that have yeah. happened before humanity yeah. is sick like they're the people who are attracted to that level of power are sick mm -hmm. really yeah um and that's why it, like we should that's why i love WikiLeaks. yeah yeah <laughs> they shine a little bit of a light on the mm -hmm. psychopathy that is so pervasive in yeah. global leadership. <laughs> it's just so bad. Yeah. It's so bad. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Hold on. <clears throat> I do remember hearing this very next part. I think this very next verbally they'll strap you down slap you with a finely crafted soundbite from the squad that you can try to feed your family with and play back for the officers arriving to evict you, evict you in the hopes that they won't snatch you out yeah like i remember yeah 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 because that's again that's what they're doing with the squad yeah. that's the squad yeah. the squad is yeah. um that like pacifying treat you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like, it's mm -hmm. the, and it's not even really a treat. Cause I mean, I mean, I guess maybe if you're into like celebrity, ce celebrities and like celebritizing yeah. your politicians and, you know, like being a fan girl. And cause that seems a lot of their, their main follow base is just like a, they're like, um, <clears throat> uh, like preteens with like the old, like kids bop magazines. I'm totally dating myself. Yeah. yeah. No, it absolutely <laughs> No, these yeah. are our Tiger Beat celebrities. We're yeah, yeah, yes, Tiger Beat, and, yeah. dude, mm -hmm. Tiger Beat. I mean, come on. I was yep. a nine-year-old, 10-year-old, 11-year-old girl. I love Devin mm -hmm. Sawa and JTT. Like, I get it, but you're not a seven, eight, or nine, 10-year-old little girl. <laughs> and they're politicians, okay. not like super cute and adorable actors yeah. and pop stars. I mean, come mm -hmm. on. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> okay, hang on. To, to date myself, let me cover up. <laughs> I cover up a little bit. Come of on, this. I already dated myself. Here's here's my here's ten year old Jesse's nineties oh, haircut. Hold on, if you really want to get to. <laughs> oh, I like that's, to carry this in my wallet. I like the feathered bar. the feather back. Right? That's nice. If, if a bartender asked for a photo ID, this is fun to pull. Up. You can see the beginnings of the pot belly. It just started to really creep in. It's like oh. that's when that's when everything went downhill. Right. That's funny. I my should... body said, you know what? Sports are not for you. You're, uh... 
Oh, yeah. You're a Sport- musician. I was, I was definitely an athlete. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely an athlete, but I was not a musician though. I love music. I'm not, I don't have a, I, I don't have a mathematical brain. Like I don't, mm-hmm. numbers kind of freak me out. I get very, I think it's m- maybe just the way my ADHD affects me. Mm-hmm. I can't, it's too much. This is going to sound maybe weird, but it's too much to hold still in my head. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Cause it's all very rigid yeah, um, and unforgiving. And it's mm-hmm. you, like, everything has to be the way that it is. Yeah. And that's hard for my brain to do. I don't sense. know if that makes sense, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just not good at math and music is math. And yep. I love music, <laughs> but I love it on like a, um, like emotional, spiritual, like level. Like yeah. that's where I get down, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay. So, so yeah, I think the two, two standout lines in this, that I, well, one, if I was going to have a, a, a t-shirt that had a line on it, it would be, you are working for a living in which you are only visiting. Yes. I was, I was really, oh. really proud of that. And I almost stopped it on that line for that reason, but then I, 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 I kept, it kept going. It? It? Um, and, and one that I was, uh, uh, really happy with was, um, Tesla funded studies show that you amount to nothing in the hours you're not wired in. Mm. Hours you spend quietly denying that you let them in your head or let them walk potential buyers in. Yes. So, yeah, I, I kind of forgot about this piece because I, I wrote a few other things directly afterwards and it kind of train wrecked at the end. And then I liked that and I, I pushed for that more. Um, and I think I put up a little screenshot of some of these lyrics when I first wrote it and uh and I, I had a few people that that had tagged the squad on it um because this was just one of those days that I was not in the mood to see more of their fucking tweets and then I saw more of their fucking tweets and and it's it's so it's just so infuriating so this um this is called late for the Hague uh I I don't know if this will end up staying spoken word or if this might get turned into an acoustic thing because it would be fun to to try to make this into a short song are there lyrics wait are there lyrics oh there sure can i'm be. just like my brain that's probably annoying yeah, let me but do that. no not at does all anybody else like you guys tell me if i'm i'm sure there are other people who do that like i it's just easier for me i think because i am just a reader like i'm very visual sometimes i don't know i'm kind of a hodgepodge hot mess to be honest so I, I actually went to, uh, when I lived in the Keys, I went to a, a little local poetry group and, and sat in and everyone was sharing pieces and I, I read something and they were like, can you bring copies for us next time? Because we need to like read. We'd like you to do that again, but we just want to be able to read it. <laughs> yeah. I think it just helped, like hearing it and reading it helps me mm-hmm. take it in more. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. I don't know why I'm trying to like psychoanalyze myself. So this one, and I never do it because I, I can't stand non-rhyming poetry, not to fault it. There's, there are some people that do it fantastically, but I, I can't, I struggle to not rhyme. I'm, I'm, it's too, I just, how, how I, I form the pieces. Mm-hmm. So I made a conscious decision to go off the rails at the end of this because it, it fit where the, the anger was going and it fit to have it end abruptly. Um, so I just sent this to you. Yeah, I got um, it. I got it. I got this it. is called Late for the Hague. Born in the shadows of graves, dug for the victims of war or the bodies of negligent poverty labeled as either essential or brave. We had to watch them lay old Lady Liberty down on the lathe, shave all her salient features away. We like our women condemned. We like our women contained. We like our platitudes flaccid and vague. We like to deify people objectively late for the Hague. We like our senators boneless because we've only elected the spineless who all lack backbone and possibly teeth because they don't bite back and they don't speak up. They resign like sheep into silence. I don't have hope when the meek all inherit the planet because they fumbled the house and the Senate and handed the reins to the people they spent four years all proclaiming as baseless, corrupted upholders of bigotry, leeching our taxes like bandits. But all of our leaders are wearing that standard. 
All of them work for the global purveyor of violence, pollution, genocide, bias, fascism, child starvation through sanction, cultural cleansing and propaganda, black Mariah, white Miranda, the streets crescendo and fascist answer. Any donation you give them is feeding the cancer. It's bloating their egos so they can come dangle the carrot, promise you two grand and hold it for ransom. Like we should fall all over ourselves when the squad tweets, lick the squad's boot, kiss the squad's feet. They ask, what would the money we promised you months ago actually mean? What would a one-time check to pay part of your rent and allow you to eat for a week mean to you and your family of three? Tell us you need it. Tell us you want it so bad. We can't hear you. Tell us how thankful you are for the squad because we're all that you have. Tell us how grateful you are that we watered a bill down to please the Republicans knowing their votes weren't needed to see that it passed. That's called unity. When your overlords can get along peacefully and agree on the most cost-effective way to starve American families to death, discreetly kill off the disabled, and slaughter people of color with impunity in broad daylight, that's what they mean by unity. And that's what they want us to be fucking thankful for. The end. <laughs> <sighs> I definitely like being able to read it <laughs> while I'm listening. That's my problem. That's my problem. I just figured it out because that was oh, maybe it's just because the other one was a lot though too. But um, well, in this, like you know, I lived this experience. one. I, I looked. I was looking, looking through my phone, and I was like, "This is right at Misty's alley. This is so close to where I you just, get when we're listen, talking squad." And I was like, "This." <laughs> I just said my lived experience, and I was like. I just sounded like a squad member. My lived experience. <laughs> but my lived experience makes this song like, you know, I feel this song in my bones because, <laughs> like, I get it, you guys. I understand that if you're a certain kind of leftist, somebody mm. who attacks, and I do attack, um, and I think it's justified, um, but somebody who comes mm -hmm. after, uh, and I mean just, like, verbally and on twitter don't come for me douche canoes um but seriously though like these are people i understand like it's really easy to bitch about republicans that's a very yeah. easy thing to mm -hmm. do um and i it's not like i there's any mystery whatsoever about what i'm going to get from the republican party or republicans exactly in 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 position Republican in light. general yeah. like I live surrounded by a lot of Republicans and they're like decent people um but mm -hmm. Republic like the party the structure no I yeah. mean but I don't nobody in the Democrat Democratic Party is um any better any different um, <laughs> and here's the problem this is why I people are why do you always focus on the squad why do you always because they're the ones pretending to be my ally they're the they're ones that the actually ones promised me something Yes. They fucked up. They shouldn't have said it. I mean, they're like, oh, <laughs> they did. what's her name? Um, Is it Marjorie Green Taylor? Mar oh, yeah. Marjorie, Marjorie Taylor Green. Yeah. Taylor Green. Okay. They're like, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, well, what about her? Like, why don't you criticize her? She never promised me a damn thing. She never yeah. told me she was going to fight for Medicare for mm -hmm. all. She never told me she's she was going to fight for a $50 mouthpiece an for the other side. Yeah, you know, and, she's yeah. a, a clown. She's a clown in a red suit, and there are clowns mm -hmm. in blue suits, and none mm -hmm. of them give a shit about you. And the reason I focus on the squad is because they, they tell people, they have people who would mm -hmm. otherwise be ready and willing mm -hmm. to really challenge the power structure. Yep. Um, they pacify those people and yep. then they get those people mad at me instead of um, allowing those people to recognize that they're getting fucked over by people claiming to be their friends. Yeah. And that pisses me off. And not just because it's gross, but because they're doing it to those people. And a lot of those people hate me and that's fine, but you're getting fucked over by people pretending to be your friends yep. and you're welcoming it. You're cheering for it. You're making excuses for it. Yep. You're attacking other people who dare to call them out. Um, they're not doing shit for you. And that makes me angry because that's why they were supposed to be there in the first place place and i'm tired of seeing exactly. people exactly. suffer while these yeah. turds put out tweets about what would this mean to you and <laughs> yeah. your family fuck off i'm sick Retweet of hearing if it. you think you should have fuck a livable wage oh are you kidding me I, with those tweets I, oh I, oh the other day I, again it's very rarely that i i don't go ahead and follow through with a tweet especially this was early in the morning i was proud of this one but um you do have a morning that, anger tweeting problem <laughs> uh it was when um 
the White House had the like something about expanding access, and I just wanted to be like, access this dick, but I didn't. <laughs> so for that little like shit poster in me that's just like, yeah, do it. Yeah. Oh, oh they God. make it so gross. And again, there was someone I followed this morning that was like, is there anything more annoying than an Assange stand? And oh. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna unfollow and mute. I'm not gonna. But the answer is yes, there is. And it's someone who's too dense to realize how important that is. And they were like, I get it's important, but there's other important things. I'm okay. like, if you think it's just a little important, you don't realize that this is the core fucking that all of those other tendrils of shit. If you can't talk to one another about what's going on, if you can't share information freely, we don't have any hope of fixing well, anything. Well, and it's not only that, Jesse, you know? really. It's not only that. These people act like when I ask people to just speak out about it, I'm mm -hmm. not asking you to make this your single issue. I've never yeah. asked somebody to be like, drop everything and, and it's only talk about this. To me, it, they gave themselves away in the language of saying standing for an Assange, an Assange yeah. standing. This is I not a, a you Assange. know... This is not a celebrity that we're uplifting because they they made a fucking movie I like or whatever. This is someone that is like uh, a I, genuine I, I, victim of empire. Exactly. A genuine. Exactly. These are people who claim to be anti-empire, claim mm -hmm. to be um, against the establishment. He is a genuine victim of empire. He yep. is being tortured to death for exposing war crimes and for uh, not just that. The threat that he poses and the fact that it's not just the United States government that he exposes, he exposes mm -hmm. governments across the globe and he exposes corporations across the globe, yeah. all the illegal dumping of toxic chemicals and yep. all kinds of shit. And I'm sorry, like, I don't know why people, it has nothing to do with Assange for the love of fucking God, mm -hmm. grow up. It, yep. He is just the person who is the placeholder for what they're trying to accomplish. Yep. He's the guy that just happens exactly. to be the person that they can hold up as the example, yeah. the head on the stake. Yeah. And that's what that is. And the, the yeah. chilling effect it has already had on the information that you are allowed to um, see, hear, ingest in any way uh, mm. is astounding. And I don't know if you are somebody who thinks that uh, powerful people should be able to do terrible things with no accountability. You need to re-examine your. You're life. in the right place. <laughs> you need to re-examine your life because that is Welcome not a reasonable thought at all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so frustrating. Anyway, sorry, rant over. So that's that's I think a good uh, an extra good reason to do the song. It just hit me today. That I've never done this song just like with with song with John because this isn't directly political, but because this was. This was the one lighter moment on the virus because it was oh, from the perspective of someone who I just sent you those lyrics to. Um, it's also oh, on you Bandcamp, did? Whatever's, okay. whatever's easier. Yeah, um, no, I had it pulled up on Bandcamp before we got started. This, I saw so many people, my my feed, I would start to follow people, starting to grow my, my Twitter account and just getting on, sharing these songs. And it was all either people talking politics, talking about what's going on, talking about the virus, or people playing Animal Crossing. And the Animal Crossing <laughs> people were just in their that. own world and they were just you know messing around and growing some vegetables and talking turnip <laughs> prices and all this and playing with AOC and like it was just was that the one she I played? was like you know what I there were a couple days that I would open up and read my feed and they just like burst into tears and like I wish I was one of those people right now I what's wish I was just about, to, about to play Animal Crossing and not not worry, not care you know? not understand what's happening um yeah and, and I'm not saying, I mean like I, I still, don't play games and yeah and I, I I'm do, not criticizing you know, that but but sometimes I just, I, I, not like I used to be able to, I mean, I can sit no. down and other times I'm just like. I Usually just, I have to be pretty high, it. to be honest. But, um, <laughs> but this, this song, and I actually, for a lot of people, it didn't make sense when I, I talk about turnip prices in this song. And obviously I'm talking about, about uh, <laughs> Animal Crossing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this I was, this that. was my, my kind of love letter to to that kind of ignorance from from the perspective of someone that got to got to be in the but a, a little tongue in cheek obviously this is um this is hooky I won't lie. 
battle scenes to keep your mind. You wake up and then you come around the bend to see the end's another starting line. Now, I've been playing hooky from the truth a long time. But a dream until the dream is just your life And everything is blurry in between The visqueen set pieces on a vacant soundstage Where there once played day-to-day -day monotony and minute of a different time A far cry from a tall glass meant for wine Full of cheap gin over Patsy Cline But that's a story for another night Tonight I wanna disconnect and feel the full effect of being someone only stressed about a turn up price Look outside, read one headline, eat, drink, sleep, internalize Maybe sprout a tumor with the stress that I suppressed When I hung up that sign that said only good vibes Like a dog in a fire thinking this is fine And hoping someone's thinking for me cause I can't decide But who could blame mother nature fantasizing our infanticide? <laughs> our infanticide like made me kind of almost nostalgic <laughs> and also like I love your snark um because it's very that's, that's a good example of the snark you talked about that time yeah yeah it's it's just this it's very because my snark's pretty thick usually <laughs> um mostly just because I don't have a lot of patience so I just usually just <laughs> you know um but Yours is very, like, maybe throughout a tumor with the stress that I suppressed when I hung up that sign that said <laughs> only good vibes. That's such a good, it's like, okay, so I'll tell you what it is. I used to have this friend named George, um, mm -hmm. and actually, he, well, I shouldn't say that much information, but, uh, yeah, so I had this friend dox named him, George. Dox him, dox no. him. <laughs> I'm just playing, I'm just playing. Um, come on, the people that hate me, I don't want them going after me. Yeah, oh, I know. Um, so, but yeah, like I, so this, this dude, I, I, I've known him forever. Um, but he's one of those dudes who's like really, really smart, like in a weird way. You know what I mean? Like he's very mm -hmm. good. Like you, he's very, he was very good with words. He's very like, he's somebody that could tell a story in the middle of a party. And that story could be about like somebody in the room or something. And they would have no idea that he was talking about them, but you know what that's I mean? Funny. Like he just had yeah. this really, yep. and that's what that is. It's like that really like under the surface kind of like, all, was that a jab? Yeah. <laughs> Did he just come for me? You know what I mean? <laughs> like. That dude just came for me, I think. <laughs> it's one of those. And I like that. Yeah. I think maybe because mine's just, yeah, so not that. <laughs> well, sometimes, but usually it's not. <laughs> but yeah, that's, I need all of these. Um, I, I need to like make a Jesse Jet playlist for when I work out. Because these, seriously, some of these, some of your, oh, like it fires me up. I could crush some weights. Seriously. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, as soon as I get, uh. The spoken word piece and all recorded that'll be on Spotify as, as soon as it's it's finished. So doesn't Spotify I, suck though? Like aren't they? I terrible? mean, in in terms of of paying artists, it's Spotify is uh, honestly. I would. I'm trying to think of what it balanced out to. I had, I want to say about twenty five hundred plays on Spotify for my first payout, and it was about fifteen bucks. 
Oh. And that'll pay for like a month of Spotify premium. So if I could pay for my own Spotify account with my Spotify money, I would have like, you know, over a half a million plays. Or something. It's, it's ridiculous yeah. how, how little they pay artists. I, I have it on there offensive. because it's the more of the promotional aspect of being able to, like the distributor I use distributes to all these different music platforms. And I, I get whatever royalties I get and it's a flat like yearly fee. Right. Um, and Spotify, it's just such a nice thing. If people want to look up your music really quickly, that's the first thing they might go to. Yeah. Um, but let's change if that. someone What's wants that? to I, listen to like music band. at like at their job or whatever, it's really easy to, to yeah, do that. That's true. So, so that's just for the, the kind of novelty of like getting to see yourself on Spotify. I was like, well, you know, it's, yeah, it's, I, I it's already that. on the list. So it's like, I don't really refer people to it um, because again, it's, it, you, could, you could spend like eight hours a day listening to my album every day for a month and it wouldn't give me the 10 bucks that you'd give me for buying the record. It's, right. it's crazy how little Spotify. So Bandcamp is my favorite. I mean, yeah. they, they take such a tiny amount of the, the, um, the fee and the fact that they basically let you kind of name your own price. Well, and they have, um, what's the Friday thing? Damn it. Um, oh yeah. Bandcamp Fridays. Yeah. yeah. Where, where there's it, but it's all like, the money goes to the all artist. The yeah. Like they don't take anything. The best. Like, yeah. So I do band I always try to buy that's, then. that's my go-to like, yeah. and I'm absolutely a stats nerd. So they let you see like, you know, what cities and countries people listen to your music and it's just, it's really neat. It's, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a fun way to kind of get to track what's, you know, what's happening. Yeah. But, that's what um, I like about Rockfin. Rockfin's um, really good about like trying to connect content creators with people who like subscribe or follow or whatever it's called on oh, Rockfin. Cool. I forget. Yeah. Um, but like, they really do like a good job of like, Hey, so-and-so just subscribe to your show. Like you should say Hey to them and then you can, and it's like a really easy connection that you can make. Nice. Um, yeah. which I like, I like that part of Rockfin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, uh, I like Bandcamp. If you're a comrade and you want people to be paid fairly for their art, mm -hmm. then you should do Bandcamp. I mean, I understand the convenience of Spotify. Yeah. I really do. But if like, just, yeah. if you're going to buy the album, go to Bandcamp and just yeah. like, you know, 10 bucks, there you go. Boom. Yep. Um, buy and, and again, I know I've mentioned it before, but you know, Bandcamp gives you free download codes. And if anybody wants a copy of the album, I'm more than happy to give you one. Just let, let me know. Cause I don't want, you yeah, know, which I think is super want you cool to have to pay for it. If you don't, if you don't want to, if you, so. or if you can't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. hundred percent. Well, we just kind of did like a closeout, which is good. Cause I know you have, to yeah, go. there we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's yeah, where thank you <laughs> again, seriously, it's so nice being able to come and, and, and read something like that i didn't i didn't want to sit on that for for a really long time i can't you wait know, to go back and read the lyrics when it's fresh like yeah or the I, lyrics I is it so. when spoken word is it lyrics is that right i would think so yeah yeah i, I don't know what else it would be words uh, okay. just sounds boring so right? <laughs> yeah I was, I was like is it lyrics lines, Ver the lines? oh it might be what uh, is it I don't know. I'm there gonna go, stanzas that go with that. that I don't really. <laughs> I'm sure there's like a term for it. Maybe I don't know. I just want to know. I like to look stuff up. Anyways, okay. So yeah, thanks for coming. Um, yeah, you know, I love having seriously. you on. I love that like you write a song and you're like, as soon as you write it, you're like, hey, yep. <laughs> can we do a show? Because I had just written. Yep. I love that. I'm like, yes, like yes, we can. Let's yep. do it. <laughs> seriously, it's the best. Yeah. So thank you so much. I can't okay. tell you how much I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, and um, you know, next time you write a song. Hit me up. All right. <laughs> All, right. Cool. All right. So thanks everybody for watching. I appreciate you guys. Um, definitely share Jesse's work. Um, follow him on Twitter. It's Jesse underscore Jet, I think. J E T T, two T's. Yep. Um, and you can find me on Twitter. You know where I'm at I'm all the time. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. So thanks for, you know, tuning in today and we'll catch you next time. Awesome.